Okay, off we go. Okay, leaving slightly later than I wanted to, but shouldn't be so bad. Hopefully this sounds better. I'm using a lapel microphone that I think is going to be okay. Better than last time. I noticed the last recording I could barely hear myself, especially um, once we got onto the highway. So we'll give this a try. Always nervous this time in the morning driving over the speed limit more often or uh, more than usual because um, if there is somebody out there uh, tracking or uh, spying there's only your car on the road that goes by once every half an hour chances are uh, he or she needs something to do so my guess is they wouldn't hesitate in stopping me I hope everybody's having a good week so far. The weather's got to start turning. In the Chicago land area, it's still cold and windy, although yesterday it was sunny pretty much the whole day, which made the 25 degree temperature a little bit more bearable. So today we are going to venture into the downtown area staying on the highway but driving through downtown on the highway which for lack of a better idea gives probably the best view of Chicago we will go downtown someday and just kind of drive through the streets I'm not that familiar couldn't give a lot of commentary on that but Hopefully this is just a relaxing drive for you. I actually enjoy this type of uh, video playing in the background when I'm going to sleep. It's, um, I don't know, again, just kind of helps put me to sleep. So around South Arlington Heights Road, this takes you out of the town. I don't know if, I think Arlington Heights is a town. Um, takes you out of the 90, which essentially takes you all the way down into um, Indiana. You know, it hooks up with the 94 and the 80 and all that. But this pretty much takes you all the way through Chicago to the bottom of Illinois. And for those of you who don't know, looks like Chicago Bears will be coming to Arlington Heights. My guess is it won't be until at the earliest 2025, but I think um, the ownership there is, um, I don't know, I think a lot of people think they're just fed up with the city, dealing with the city, but you know, the city would have probably bent over backwards to do what it would take to get them uh, to stay. But my guess is that um, they just think that there's a lot more room for growth in Arlington Heights. A lot of things that they don't have to worry about in the city. Um, I don't know. Lived in Buffalo for a while, and certainly there, they've never had, I think it's since the 1960s, they've never had their team in the downtown area. And I think a lot of people wanted them to move downtown, thinking that it would bring bring more activity into the city, which has struggled over the years, certainly with poverty, crime, drugs. It's gotten somewhat better over the past 10 years, but um, still, that probably would have helped. But I think it's debatable. If you go and look on, like, Nextdoor and look at the back and forth 
between uh, those who want Arl uh, the Bears to come to Arlington Heights, those who don't, it's pretty much 50-50. And it's like a religious discussion. Nobody's going to change anybody's mind. If you think bringing the Bears into Arlington Heights will destroy that neighborhood, especially during the games, nobody's going to tell you different. If you think that having the Bears there is great because it's a closer drive and you don't have to worry about trying to navigate public transportation and, you know, trying to get out of downtown, then, yeah. Well, there's that car wash, Driven Car Wash. I got something in the mail yesterday saying, um, for a free car wash. I think I'm going to use that. At half a tank, could get gas because it's pretty cheap right now. But um, half a tank will get me to Holland. So you got to time these drives just right in terms of bathroom breaks. So a three-hour drive for me, no problem. Uh, I shouldn't say that. It depends, I guess, what I ate the night before and how much I drank in the morning. But um, look at this. So over here, it's like 50 cents more per gallon. And it's right around the corner. How could that be? doesn't make sense. So in a minute here, we're going to be heading east on the 90, which will be pointing us pretty much right to Lake Michigan. And then we'll kind of start heading southeast once we get closer to the city and we kind of cross cut the city when we drive through it. And these guys shouldn't be on the road. When they're taking this turn at 20 miles an hour or 25 miles an hour, you can't pick up the speed you need to get on the road. So, okay, he's doing a little better now. tell you, I, w I was always, I don't know if it was, uh, had some sort of, I was judgmental about people who own BMWs, probably because it took me a while before I could afford one myself, but never, you know, I always had bad things to say. Old men, drive it, it's about it, you know, that kind of thing. But finally got one and said, and I just love it. I love everything about it. And I only have a 330, and I still love it. I love everything about it. I love the technology. I love how comfortable it is. I love how quiet it is. Um, and even little things. When I'm talking on the phone, in the conference call when I'm driving, they don't even know I'm driving. And most of the time when you're, you know, when you're on the phone with somebody who's driving, you can barely hear them. It sounds like they're in a wind tunnel. I don't know how, if you can, if you could actually appreciate the uh, ground noise when I'm driving now, and I'm you know driving pretty quick right now, and uh, but maybe that'll give you an idea of how quiet it is. So setting up this video once we get it all on the road and there's a guy passing me on the right which is illegal in the UK you bastard and he's got a pickup truck drivers I don't know what the deal is with pickup truck drivers horrible drivers um, what was I saying yeah when I do the uh, so when I I put overlays on my videos to so you can see sort of where I am and how fast I'm going Horizontal and vertical acceleration, all that kind of stuff, um, altitude, 
I don't know. Some people liked it. I like watching that or knowing that kind of stuff. But as I go, th as I do it this time, I'm going to try to put two maps up. We'll see how it looks. But one of them for sort of closer fidelity so you can actually see the roads that I'm passing or driving on. Um, you know, the text on the map's kind of small, so I think that'll help. And then also put a really, you know, zoomed out one so you could tell in the context of, say, around Lake Michigan where we are and things like that. So Mercedes station wagon, he's probably thinking I'm fine, I'm going 83 or something like that, but I think I'm going to take that same tactic, get up to 98 or so. Another thing about this car, it's just so smooth, you can be going 115. Um, which is close to where I topped this car out before. Um, it had more, but 115, and it is really just, it feels like you're driving 50. I would have no problem taking this car on the Autobahn. So I can... I always try to figure out where the line of demarcation is so um, where I could actually see the skyline and it's not yet and we're getting close to a place called Rosemont popular area around Chicagoland turn on my car GPS now. I've been using Waze. have it take me to the hotel. If I get there early enough, I'll grab some breakfast. There's that pickup truck who was driving 100 miles an hour, passing me on the right side a bit ago.
There's a plane coming in. It looks like to Midway. Maybe not. So two pretty substantial airports in Chicago. So obviously O'Hare. Um, by far the biggest airport in Chicago. But also Midway. Um, essentially it's a southwest. It's their hub now. So Midway's in little bit more challenging of a neighborhood um, the area around there isn't the best but you know not horrible and then um, obviously O'Hare is more in the suburbs easy to get around Midway you, know, you can walk through the whole airport probably in 20 minutes um, unlike o O'Hare obviously it's a huge international airport okay traffic's starting to pick up a little bit not so bad can't. We're still under 80, though. We're only going 75. I forgot. I wanted to turn off my GPS on the dash cam. It kind of puts its own embed. It embeds its own stamp into the videos. And um, it doesn't work that well, honestly it's not the best and it doesn't have a lot of the information that I like to put on my overlays that I like to put on my videos so I don't really use it and I want to unplug it but I'm afraid it might screw up this recording so I'll probably leave it in for now So should be able to start getting a glimpse of downtown here. I think I see the I think I see the lights of the Sears Tower. Maybe not. It could be airport lines. More likely, yeah. So I'm not familiar with the public transportation here, red line, blue line, where they go. I pretty much drive everywhere, so. So now these express lanes were not open. Last time. Waze wants me to take them. But I'm afraid to. Let's see if they're open. Looks like they are open. So I guess we'll try, see what happens here. Somebody tell me why this was closed last week when I came, which I came a little bit earlier, understood. Got behind the wrong car here, unfortunately. Yeah, so what does this do? So express lanes, what do, what do they do? So is this the road that you'll take because you don't need to get off on any exit?
All right, somebody's got to tell me about this express lane, what it is. <clears throat> it looks like it's just driving. Okay, I got to watch out. Way says there's a pothole coming up. Right around here somewhere. Don't hit it. Don't hit it. Don't hit it. Okay. Okay, we're still driving just right next to the 90. Now we got a shot of downtown coming in. I guess at the very least it opens up more lanes and clears things out a little bit. But in about three miles, we're going to be picking up the 94. This essentially looks like it just opens up two more lanes. I think that would make it six lanes all heading towards downtown. say one thing about Chicago drivers they drive fast and just in general I'm not talking about reckless you know weaving in and out although they definitely have that their share of them but just in general everybody drives fast only occasionally will you get behind somebody who's driving less than 10 miles over the speed limit Here's another good shot of the city. Hopefully, I know you can't appreciate it, even in 4K. It looks better in person, trust me. I just love the view of Chicago driving in like this. It's the best skyline view, I think, uh, in the US. I mean, I've taken the boat tours and all that, and still, this is, driving in on the 90 is the best view. Okay, so we're going to be getting off here. Um, basically, we're staying on the 90, um, the Dan Ryan Expressway, but we're picking up 94 joins the 90 right here. So yeah, we're pick, we're right back with the 90. So yeah, I don't know what that does. I think it just gives more, it opens up more lanes. Hopefully that's a, a smart decision. In other words, somebody's kind of looking at the amount of cars driving through and if it's, see another excellent view. Um, and depending on the amount of traffic, that's how it determines, you know when to open those or not. I don't know why you wouldn't always open them though. Saving the road? I don't know.
Whoa. I don't like that either. That guy was merging in when people are driving 55 miles an hour. Not smart. Not not the guy's fault, but I wonder if there's a yield sign back there. Okay, two and ten here for a little while. I guess now we're officially driving out of downtown. Never been to St. Louis. I know very little about it. You never hear about St. Louis. Stay on Subaru driver in front of me. Nope, Toyota. So now I'm stuck behind him with a line of cars on my left, which really sucks. Nothing worse than passing a car and then they pass you a little bit later because you're stuck behind a friggin' Toyota! Who like merged over four lanes in front of me. Zero road rage at all inside of me though. And she was like, her face was like two inches away from the steering wheel. And I will try passing this dude again. This time, hopefully, it'll stick. Okay, Waze looks like it's showing... Now that traffic's coming the other way. It looks like it is showing police though. About a mile ahead. Let's see how good it is. body do when you've been eating pretty much zero carb oh yeah so the police should be coming up here in 
a minute. Let's see. I don't see anything. Um, not eating carbs pretty much for a year. And then I loaded up. Uh, Friday and Saturday and part of Sunday had a piece of cake had Giordano, Giordano's uh, deep dish pizza had pancakes so I that was a definite cheat weekend for me I'm always nervous about that because Again, I think I'm a food addict, and once you start, it's hard to turn it off. But and you can see the traffic building up uh, in the westbound direction. So I think my record time is about 2 hours and 42 minutes from Arlington Heights to Holland, Michigan, right to the hotel. So we'll see what we can do here. Last, And that was in some snow, so we had to really pull it back when we got uh, around South Bend. So we're cruising pretty good here. Left a little bit later, so I may hit some traffic around Gary. Um, yeah, Gary. Let's see, we're going about 87 right now. I'd like to know who Dan, who Dan Ryan is. So right now we're sort of driving through Evergreen Park. It's on the south side, south side of Chicago, southwest side of Chicago. I've been there before. Really big park, really nice area. A lot of industry around here. So somebody tell me who Dan Ryan is. Dan Ryan Expressway. Sounds like a proper Irish Catholic name. That guy must be going about 120. And this guy right now, another one. 120. And my guess is they work together. It's either getting going the same way, pretty much. Okay, we're just going under uh, West 95th Street. Okay, we're going to take uh, Bishop Ford Parkway here, 94 East.
be a little bit careful here. For me, driving careful isn't just about me making sure I'm staying in my lane or anything like that. It's about creating space for any young drivers out there. That's the key to avoiding accidents, in my opinion, is creating space for yourself by using your brake lights to keep people a little bit further off behind you um, and just looking for space instead of you know driving and bumping or going right up against somebody and um, you know yeah creating space so if something does happen you have time to react so I believe right now we're no longer on the 90 just the 94 pretty sure pretty good pace right now but we're going to be hooking up with the 80 in about 9 miles so we'll take the 80 east and 94 I don't know if it's south or if it's east Probably east. Yeah, we're definitely not on the 90 any longer. I don't know why. I mean, sometimes it does take me that way really late at night, especially when I'm coming in to Chicago. It'll take me over the Skyway. That's where the traffic pattern is tough. You got to really be paying attention there. This one's a little safer. Yeah, we're heading, you know, southwest right now on the 94. And, yeah, we'll be picking up the 80 about another seven miles. So we've been driving about 40 minutes, traveled about 42 miles so far.
you guys like driving more in the evening when it's dark or or in the morning when it's dark or during uh, daylight? I'm just curious. try to turn off my music app here because it looks like it's still trying to play music. In fact, let's see what happens when I close it. And it's still playing. Why? Is there a cop here? I don't see one. And I'm going to say not there. So the way Waze works, I'm sure you know, is that essentially people report <coughs> traffic or um, radar or police or whatever. And if somebody reports it, you'll be able to see it if you're coming up behind that person. And sort of self-monitoring, if enough people say it's not there, then it'll take it off the map and all that stuff. But if police were smart, because what do you do if you see police reported ahead? You slow down. So if they really think that I know they think that you know driving fast is a cause of accidents. I don't believe that. But if that's what they think, they should probably have somebody working full time driving around and setting this, you know, police button every two miles or something like that. You know, that way people would be just constantly slowing down and making sure there's no police ahead. That's what I do. So we're going to stay in the left lane here to get off on uh, 94 and the 80. So, so since we got off of the 90, we jumped on the 94 by itself. And uh, now 94 and 80 East join together here. This happens right around South Holland, Illinois. So now that we're on 8094, this road pretty much goes, you know, almost all the way into Holland. In the morning, this is the only time where this is sort of busy. Normally when I'm driving up in the afternoon, I could go from the right lane all the way over to the very left lane in seconds. 
no traffic. So we're just below East Chicago now, and I'm going to jump in the left lane before somebody else beats me to it. <clears throat> Going close to 90 miles an hour, and this is a 55. And here's Indiana. So we got to Indiana in 48 minutes and 20 seconds. I think we're probably about 10 minutes away from Gary. <clears throat> and this corridor, right on the southeastern tip, sorry, southwestern tip of Lake, Lake Michigan, is always a little bit congested. And if you hit it wrong, you can just be stop and go here for 10 miles. Obviously, we're cruising along here pretty good. So again, my suggestion is you turn this on when you're ready to go to bed and this drive, this sounds of the drive and you know, very peaceful to me. Even if you wake up a lot, you know, this will put you back to sleep. So a little bit of construction going on here. So these warning strips, not sure what they're for here. I'm guessing it's construction. So again, I don't have my rear dash cam yet. And I will get that, but I can show you that there's a guy right on my tail here. He's not being mean. He kind of goes back and forth a little distance and then closes it up. He's just a bad driver. But um, I wish I could show you how you can create space. Like if I tap my brakes a little bit, he might back off. He's not too bad, though.
I drive that close sometimes when I know that somebody in the right lane is going to try to jump in. And if I don't want to give him that space because it'll be dangerous for him to do that, um, I'll get closer. But there's nobody doing that for this guy. And if I do think that guy behind me or that lady behind me is getting too close and, you know, could be a risk, I usually let him go by. Now I got this asshole truck driver right behind me. Who cut off the guy that was right up my rear end before. So now he's up my rear end. Look, <clears throat> I drive fast just because I want to get to where I'm going fast. Um, but I also know stupid. And passing one car when you're in traffic, in other words, you can't clear this traffic. You have to kind of, you know, do what you can. Um, but passing one car does absolutely nothing for you, especially if that car is going more or less keeping up with the traffic. So we're definitely right, uh, right in Gary proper. Okay, now he's driving faster, so now I'm going to pick it up and not let him go by me, but he'll be okay. He's got that whole middle lane that he can cruise. Again, a pickup truck. Pickup truck drivers. Are they all assholes? Every pickup driver? Horrible driver. Met very few pickup drivers that I like. Horrible drivers. Okay, he just gained three cars. Three cars, that's probably about two seconds he just gained by pulling those maneuvers. But anyway, making good time. So this week for me is, you know, everybody who works someplace, usually the opinion people have of you, I don't know if this is the case for every, for every company and for every, everybody, but hang on, I'm just checking my microphone here. Everybody's opinion of you usually comes down to a few things, a few moments of one or two projects, something you may have said. It's those little things that people judge. So when people make decisions about you, whether, you know, how much you make or whether you should be promoted or, um, you know, just general opinion even. It's not based on the long-term duration of, and body of work. And usually it's current, things that recently that you've done. That's unfortunate because everybody has good things they do and everybody has bad things. Now, the really good employees could do, you know, more or less all the time they succeed, find a way. And obviously that's where, you know, we should all hope to be someday. Um, but more often than not, people do, you know, things really well, and sometimes they do things not so well. 
So this week is one of those weeks, those judgment weeks for me, I think. So we're, we've been going through this oh, left lane ends. I got to jump over here. I'm going to move my microphone up here, hoping it doesn't cause too much of an issue as I navigate. Um, so we've been working on this project for, you know, about eight months now, and um, basically we're just replacing their core technology with Oracle, ERP, financials, HR, pretty much everything and we're already two months behind and depending how this week goes we may be a third month behind but we were pretty sure we were going to make it this month but we have a lot more testing to do they use a product called CPQ um, CPQ is sort of just a generic way it, it stands for configure price and quote but a lot of companies have customers who place orders no matter what it is something that you have to basically make or um, configure your options that you'd like so anything that any every company that has things that they sell where you have choices color you know dimensions um, uh, I don't know fabric, you know, all those things, if you have to make, if you want to let the customer make their choice, this is typically what drives orders going into their internal system. And what makes CPQ so challenging is that you have to have a machine or a computer or software govern what you can choose and what you can't choose. So let's say that I'm selecting, a, let's say a door, and a door is, I don't know, three feet by eight feet, okay? When somebody chooses that door, the next thing they need to do, we need, they need to uh, choose is, let's say the, um, uh, let's see, the size of the window, if there's a window in that door. And I would, the machine, ha or the uh, software has to know not to allow you to select four foot width. Okay, that's just one example. But just think of all the different sizes that a door could be. And all the different sizes that a window could be in that door. And all the different types of doorknobs or handles or door stops that you can choose. A lot of them are contingent upon what they've chosen so far in their selection. So this company sells basically entire floor or entire office space of wall units, movable wall units. So just think of all of the permutations which is in the thousands or the tens of thousands and every one of those rules has to be manually created because of that something can go wrong because of that many and if something goes wrong you know they can start the manufacturing of these wall systems or these wall units and they make one wrong cut and it can cause tens of thousands of dollars to fix that to go back and redo everything or worse they may actually send it to the customer that way. So we had a third party enter all the rules. And this is the week where we're going to see how, where we are with it. If it's not good, chances are we're going to have to delay another month. If it's good, then we got a shot. So... And I'm always one to push the envelope and go, you know, just go live and not delay, even if things look bad, because 
I'm a big believer that in crisis situations, like for example, you're live, and if something's wrong, you got to fix it right away. The ability of people to achieve in those situations is really strong. That's why I think almost everybody would be good in battle. Again, when you're in a crisis situation, you can do great things. I wrote a paper when I was in Oxford, so I got my MBA um, from Oxford in the UK. And I'm still trying to get the, my microphone in the best place here. Apologies. Okay, let's see how this goes. Um, so when I was living in the UK, I um, got my MBA there, and it was, uh, by the way, just a great experience if you ever had the opportunity to to uh, live in the UK, number one, and go to Oxford, number two. It's like a thousand-year-old campus. When you walk through that city, it's just incredible. But anyway, I wrote a paper called Manufactured Crisis, and my, I was trying to spur discussion by saying that if you manufactured crisis, in other words, made it up, and said something like, you know, um, if we don't get this new system installed by April 1st, the old one is going to cease to exist. The company that we, you know, purchased this from 10 years ago is out of business, and um, they're shutting down their servers and we're out of it. So made up a story like that. I guarantee you that we would be able to go live. Because people would just f figure things out. You know, just like if somebody's about to die because they're not going to get, they're going to get hit by a car and it's coming 50 miles an hour. You know, they're going to make a Herculean jump out of the way because they know that it's do or die. So I wrote that paper, by the way, and talked about all the historical evidence that shows that crisis situations is where people really can achieve greatness. You know, you look at you know how quickly they turn around a, a corona um, virus antibody. You know, it was a crisis situation, and. You know, they came up with that pretty quickly. Three different companies or four different companies came up with that pretty quickly. Um, anyway, got a horrible grade on the paper. I can't remember what the grade was. It was not good at all. Didn't understand it. Um, they don't really give you a lot of feedback on the results, but um, I think it was an ethical concern. But I really try to make it clear that I wasn't suggesting that you should make things up ever right because if you do that and you're a leader you know the trust factor goes away but anyway I mean if you look at what happened during um, COVID companies had to almost overnight figure out a way to run their business without people in the building and I'm not talking manufacturing because a lot of manufacturing companies were able to stay open. They, you know, claim that they were um, critical businesses. I can't remember essential businesses. I'm talking about even just companies that don't manufacture. They are just, you know, office. They they run their business without having to be in, uh, making things. And I guarantee, if you would have said, "Hey, you know what? You have one week." to get everybody the ability to work from home. They would have said, you're crazy. We have to upgrade our security. We have to get new um, video conference software. The one we have isn't going to make it. Um, people don't have internet at home. Uh, their computers are no good, so we'd have to give them a computer. Uh, we haven't given out laptops for, to, for everybody. People just have PCs, so what are we going to do there? Um, everybody's going to complain because they have dual monitors in the building, and they're not going to have it at home. Productivity is going to go down. You know what? 
I would suggest that working from home, people were just as productive as if they were in the office. I know that for sure. For me, that was the case. And for all of the people that I work with, that was the case. You figure it out in a crisis situation. Just think about occasions where, you know, where you work right now. Something happened, you know, somebody had to step up. Somebody left the company that everybody thought was irreplaceable, and you find out that, nope, I guess that's not the case. I'm going to move my microphone down a little bit more here, if I can. Let's see. Hopefully that's a little better. Do a time check here. So we're about one hour and eight minutes in. So 68 minutes. Driven 78 miles. So we're averaging about 72 miles an hour. Not the best. So what do you think about the space I'm giving this person in front of me? Is this adequate or no? I remember when I was taking dry in driving school, I think they said you gotta you should be able to count uh, to three after you pass after the car in front of you passes the landmark. Let's see. Thousand one, thousand two. So I'm only about one second. This is a nice four-lane highway that pretty much connects Gary and um, South Bend. Oh, and hopefully that guy doesn't come after me. I think that was police. I didn't even see that. I was too busy looking at my map. So we're just about driving 
due south of Michigan City. about 29 degrees right now. So Michigan City is in LaPorte County. I guess they call this area Michiana. Not sure why. It's got about 31,000 people, so decent sized city. Looks like Michigan City was founded in around 1830. Paid about $200 for 160 acres of land here. But the city wasn't formally incorporated until 36. Had about 1,500 people around then. Second, Michigan City was the second city to decriminalize marijuana. Marion County was the first, but Michigan City was even more um, liberal. With their decriminalization than Marion County. So I didn't know Ann Baxter was from Michigan City. It's kind of strange because I always thought she had a New York accent. Don Larson, I think he pitched a perfect game in the World Series. I think Michigan City might be one of the few cities where there's more men than women. It's 
So 69.5% white, 26% African American. See the South Bend exit right there. It's about 20 miles away, I think, from the road. Appreciate you, pal. Hopefully I'm okay on gas here. Let's see. It says 123 miles to empty. And we're 91 miles away. Eee, I don't like that. Looks like I'm not going to have time to stop at um, the hotel, unfortunately. Well, we're definitely coming up uh, uh, up the east side now of Lake Michigan. About 35 miles, the 94 will give way to the 31 and the 196, which basically takes you back towards the lake um, and rides right all along the lake to Holland. Getting a little chilly in here. It's only it's still only 29 degrees outside. I try to avoid stopping only because I gotta figure out how this happens, but the um, so you have to sync up the the GPS information with the camera, and normally you sync that up. You know, at the beginning you kind of find a landmark, or when you pass something, and you sync those two things up, but. You, if you stop the car, the, the uh, camera will shut off automatically. So then there's a break. And when there's a break, it kind of causes all sorts of problems. You're no longer in sync. Um, you got to 
you know, you have to divide the, t the um, GPX file in two. It's kind of difficult. So we're passing through Michigan right now, um, right on the border of uh, Indiana and Michigan. And the time zone change will be happening in a few minutes here. I kind of wish I would have got gas. I'm going to move out of the way. You never know when somebody comes up behind you if they're police or not. So when it's dark, you can't tell. So if somebody's going real fast, I usually let them go. And I'm going to double check the weather here to make sure we're clear. Okay, looks like we're crystal clear all the way. Gotta like that. So I'm going to change my destination on my car sat nav to be the office. Yeah, it's very pretty. I don't know if you can see it. If you look over to the right, it's kind of being blocked by trees now, but you can kind of see the, the sun coming up. And when that first happens, the color of the sky kind of changes to amber. I love people throwing cigarettes out the window. I'm sure it's from this pickup truck here. Pretty nice, we're going about So I think now you should be able to see up through that tunnel there what I was talking about with this guy. Very pretty. So 
So I have three different source files of information now that I'll be using. So I have the camera and this is going to be tough because hmm I'm guessing I won't use the audio from the camera because I bought a digital audio recorder which I'm running it through now so with a little lapel mic so that'll be my second so that's for audio <clears throat> and then I also have the telemetry uh, for telemetry I have GPS system running I think it's called open GPS tracker is the name of the software it doesn't have everything but it has enough so you can see what you see on the screen right now um, definitely has all that but I'm trying to find one that would automatically overlay like what city you're in and things like that So I'm kind of trying to dig in for a snack here. I don't want to have one because I had a really bad week weekend of eating and I want to try to cleanse myself a little bit here. So I'm going to try to stay away. So we're about 23 miles away right now from uh, getting off the 94 and hitting, sorry I just got an email which caught my attention. I heard the weather in Holland's going to be pretty much cloudy and sometimes rainy, but a little warmer, like 50-ish. Just in case this guy wants to go two lanes. No. Nope. I'll take that as a no. Jeff Foxworthy, that guy's still around. Look at his picture, probably makes him look like he's 16 or 40. And he must be 70 by now. if he's still allowed to kind of do the uh, you'll know your redneck if with uh, you know the way things are today saying things like that might not go over very well so I wonder if he still does that so we're about 92 minutes in driven 111 miles I think we're in for a new record
So we're definitely in the Eastern time zone now. So it's 7.22 Eastern time. Bridgman. How do you pronounce that? Is it spelled wrong? Bridgman? Got to be an E in there. Bridgman? This road is just so nice to drive on. Quiet, no potholes, knock on wood. Three lanes. <laughs> he flashed the high beam at him. So I better get out of here because these two guys might be mad at each other. So we're going about 95 right now. So that said, the Michigan state flower is the marijuana plant. So not a bad drive. All I can think about is food, unfortunately. If I didn't eat shitty over the weekend, 
right now I would definitely be grabbing in, grabbing a snack or making time to go to the hotel for some eggs, but got to minimize the damage here. It's definitely noisier here. I don't know if you can tell that. I'm going to get in the left lane because I don't like these bumps. just got out of Lincoln Township. Heading into St. Joseph's Township. Obviously, some smaller communities around here. Okay, I'm going to really turn it up a little bit here, see where we can go. to about 101 just now.
Hate potholes. Hate potholes. Alright, I need like an energy drink or something. police up here. So we're dialing it down a little bit. Where are they? Oh, looks like they already pulled somebody over. So they're probably right here in the median. But they caught somebody. We're going to be taking this exit 34. Which will land us on 31 North. Whoa. And 196 North. So we'll essentially be on this road for another 45 miles. We're about 48 minutes away. Red Arrow Highway. Oh, and I forgot to check into my hotel room, which means I'm probably going to get a crappy room. Let's see. Check in, come on, check in.
room 247. Let me check what's available here. I don't have much available. What about the fourth floor? Uh, they're both kind of right next to the elevator, which I guess isn't the worst thing that could happen. I think I'm going to pick the one next to the elevator. We'll see how loud it is. Should have probably checked in yesterday because they probably won't have my digital key ready. But no biggie. So, somewhere along the way here, this road transitions from uh, a 196 North Interstate to like 196 Local. So of course this guy's joyriding in the left lane. Wonder what that guy's carrying. You know, I hate to say it, I'm not one of these guys, but I think I have to hit Starbucks. get one of those giant Americanas. So we're about, let's see, 112 minutes in, driven 130 nine miles let's see see if I still have my Starbucks app now, I created the Starbucks app in the UK which has caused me all sorts of problems so I gotta find the store okay let's see so I want to find a store in Holland Well, I don't know which one it is. There's a bunch of them here. So 
Starbucks. Near Felch Street, Holland. Looks like the one. Well, I'm not sure which one it is. I just want to know what to order. Okay, so I see it's got coffee, but what can you put on there? Coffee, Americana, okay, we like Grandi, okay, flavors, sweeteners, let's see. See, I don't see like the sugar free stuff. I know I want the three shots. Okay, they have sugar-free vanilla syrup. I like that. So I think I want like four shots of that. So what are they emitting into the air, you think? Obviously see smokestacks.
whenever I drive through areas like this where it's definitely rural, but I know that people live around here. I always wonder, I don't know, what people's, like there's a house right there, right on the side of the road. There's a trailer parked, really old, unlivable trailer parked in the, in the uh, backyard. But what are their lives like? I always wonder about that stuff. So we'll take you through um, Starbucks once we get up here and show how horribly I order because I never go here. And the embarrassment of having to ask for a receipt. Tulip Festival, May, second week of May. And I won't be here because I'll be getting my, getting surgery for a hernia that I've had for who knows how long. So we're about 33 minutes and 33 miles away. So definitely the back end of the journey here. Thank you for joining. Would love for you to subscribe to my channel. I want to start doing live streaming, but I can't do live streaming until I have, um, I think, at least 50 subscribers. But even then, it's limited. I think you have to get up to 1,000. But yeah, I would love to live stream. There's a police right there. I hope he's not tracking me. if you could hear that whistle but something about the aerodynamics of this car in particular I'm sure not all of the BMWs are like this but there's like a whistle that comes through when it's windier out to know what the name of that river was. I don't know what the name of that river was. Anybody know what the name of that river was? Anyway. It goes right to the lake.
the formation of the Great Lakes is just, the story behind that is just beyond my comprehension. So apparently the last ice age, when it occurred, I don't know when, must have been 10,000 years ago, something like that. Um, the ice beds went all the way down to... I think like the middle of the US like areas of like I don't know Oklahoma um, man I'm horrible with my Kansas um, what else is down there so I guess anything that would fall if you like drew a horizontal line across the US, that's about where the ice uh, beds. And in this area, I believe the ice was like a mile high or some crazy thing like that. And the way they describe it is that when the ice went away, it carved out these gorges. like actually carved it out when it was receding and the water from those uh, glacials or glaciers is what made up the Great Lakes, all the Great Lakes. So it's incredible to think that they were formed during the last ice age. Even more incredible than that is how Niagara Falls formed and how not so long ago I think maybe 3,000 years ago the gorge which is like when the water goes over the falls it falls into a gorge and that gorge is sort of you know I don't know what it is 10 stories below the top of the falls it runs you know at that low level for miles and apparently Niagara Falls was like several miles down where that gorge is now and it just kept eroding and apparently happened pretty quickly. So the falls where you see it today it was actually much further um, down the gorge at one point. Better send a note about what time I'll be in there. Hi Tamara. Semicolon. New line. New line. I'll be in about 8.30 to 9 this morning. Period. I drove up from Chicago this morning. Period. Does anybody else use voice to voice uh to text. Got to be careful. Review what, how uh, it was interpreted. Interpreted. Whoa! Wind just definitely pulled me right there.
Wish I knew what street the Starbucks was on. Okay, now I'm doing the uh, no blinker BMW turn lane change. not super hungry, but I want to eat. That's my problem right there, in a nutshell. That's my problem.
hey, whenever it's sunny out, you can't complain. You know what I'm saying? And what am I going over right now? What is this? Sagatuck Lake? Way's map is horrible. They need to, like, partner. Partner with Google Maps or something like that. Fuel reserve. I got 50 miles left and I only have 11 miles to my destination. So I'm fine. Am I following too close? Yeah, that Jeep should not be in the right lane. So now you can see on the right side, 196 Interstate, and on the left side, basically, it's a residential, I don't know, business district, they call it. So two different signs. So, you know, I, I actually find the, the road signs to put on the map that you see, but um, it was hard to find this one. You see it right here.
There's a windmill. To the right. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Wow, that sun is bright. My car sounds funny, but it's because I think when I, I'm driving slow, I always have the radio on or something. So I think I am going to go to the hotel just to, again, trying to see our time here. So I think this is a record. But anyway, find out how long it took, and then uh, just kind of, maybe I'll drop my bags off. We'll see. Eh, maybe not. What's the point? Wow, look at the junk on that thing. The heck? Let's see if the hotel is ready or not. Eh, no, still preparing room. Shit. Shoot. Behind a truck here, I got. I probably should have went around. A 
Attenzione, segnalato pericolo. I think she said lane closed ahead. I think I can go on this lane. So 183 miles, about 184 miles, 2 hours, 27 minutes. Great time. We'll uh, stop the clock as soon as we hit the hotel here, which is right here. I think I'm going to walk in. I'm just too, too hungry. And then I'll hit Starbucks. Ah. We have to take off about 30 seconds here. here stop there save this drive okay two hours 28 minutes 184 miles not too shabby sorry about all the noise here Perfect.